Beautiful humans, welcome back to the I Like Birds podcast. I'm your host, Zach Rippey, and this podcast is dedicated to the non-believers, the confused believers, and the true believers, because I, at one time or another, was all three. So I'm here to help you get a better understanding of who Jesus is and what he's all about. I'd love to grow in our faith together. You learn as I learn. I like the Bible, and I like words, so therefore, I like birds. Let's start the show. All right, here we go. Get me going. I feel it. It's going to be real. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming back, man. It's episode five. Hope you're still liking the intro. I'm still digging it. Uh, man, it feels good to be here. It really does. Uh, I just, I'm so excited with the with the conversations I've been having with so many people about the show. And I, I'm so glad you guys enjoy it, man. Thanks for showing love. Y'all are the greatest. Uh, let's keep it going though, man. Let's keep it going. Uh, most people quit by episode seven. So we're at five right now. So we got about two more until we can hang it up, baby. We can walk away like Mike said. We got those seven episodes. We're Gucci. But nah, man, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here, dude. I'm happy to be here. Uh, this, ep- this episode is going to be uh, it's going to be dope. It's going to be real. It's going to be very, uh, how can I say it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be. I feel like it might be emotional. It might be, it might be, I don't know. I never said some of these things out loud. You know what I mean? So it's like one of those things where it's like, Ooh, it's going to be dope. All right. So we're, I thought I was always going to just pull something from what I was reading and share it. But, uh, today I went on a different, different wave. You know, I just decided to actually spend time with God and just really be here in the moment. And not really be too calculated about things and just really just uh, just think and express myself in a way that's different. Like th- I normally record at night when my wife is like in the room with the baby going to sleep. But today she's at her mom's house. So I'm at the house by myself. So I was really uh, and it's daytime still it's like six o'clock. So the sun's out. So it's a different little energy for me right now uh, than it has been. But I think it's good. I'm going to embrace it. And I think it's been great because I've just been in the word reading earlier today. I had lunch with a friend, my friend Parker Slavens. And then we went ahead. And uh, I got home and then I just kind of chilled for a little bit. And then I opened my Bible and then I just started writing uh, like how I was feeling about about God and about Jesus and about uh, just my experiences lately. And I was thinking because I've been talking to a lot of people over the phone about like this new journey and this new chapter, man. And uh, it's been really special, man, because I've gotten to really be honest with people that I felt I was afraid to be honest with at one time. You know, like when I was struggling with something or if I was... uh, not sure about my life or my career or my pursuit of life. I felt sometimes that it was hard for me to like get real and just share. And, uh, it feels good though, knowing that you can do that now. And I think God's really helped me do that in my real life, like my everyday life with my, with my wife and my wife's family and, uh, the people I'm talking to on the phone that have been really gracious and wanting to talk to me and, uh, just friends and just people I touch on a daily basis, you know? And it's been really cool, especially, uh, post quarantine to like go see some friends that I haven't seen in a while and just really connect with them and just connecting with good people, man, having great conversations, man. I can't remember the last time I had a bad conversation. Like my, my, my conversations are heaters right now, like with people. And it's just been so special, man. And it's been God moving. It's been, we talking about God, talking about Jesus, talking about the Bible, the word and the pursuit and Americanized version of Christianity. That's kind of, you know, it's, it's viewed so differently than, than, uh, Jesus, wants it to look like you know he wants the church to be different and I think we're going to get into that at another episode because I got so much to say about that but uh this episode is a little different man uh I somebody asked me man if I'm going to still do stand up you know how much am I going to do it can't give it up and I don't know man I don't know if I am I really think I'm going to do it on my terms kind of you know and really try to keep that mindset and I think God's going to help me do that but I really don't want to like fall back into the old trap of just you know feeling like I have to do all these shows all the time to have fun and, and get better or whatever. And, uh, just like, I want to keep comedy part of my life, but I want to be in control of it, you know, and just, and I can, and that's the thing I can, but, uh, I don't know if I'm going to rush back to stand up as soon as I can, or try to start some of the old shows that I used to have. And I, I don't know. So I, I, and here's the reason I'll, I'll just be honest with you guys. hundred percent. All right, let me get into this. So I love to give it my, like something, my everything, right? Like, this is, like, all I have in me. I, I use every ounce of that, like, energy for something that I'm, like, pursuing. I've just always been that way. I don't know why. It's, like, uh, I, that's why I love Jordan and Kobe so much because they just had this thing in their brain that says, like, you can't beat me. Like, I'm going to do everything in my power to win. But it's not even that. It's, like, a – and it's not you thing. It's a me thing. Like, Michael Jordan wasn't 
trying to beat you so bad. He was trying to make sure he can beat himself. That doubt, that that thing that popped in their brain that told them they can't do something, that thing that society tells you you can't do, the things that you're afraid of as far as judgment or people's words or uh, what people are going to say about you or think about you. It's like once you get over that hump and you just hunker down and you do what you want to do, uh, my buddy Jeff is like one of those people, man, where he's like, or he at least aspires to be, you know, as much as he, as much as he can. And it really like rubs off on me. And then God helps me do that too, because I really just give it all my all. And, you know, people say I'm hardworking in that regard, but I'm really not like hardworking. Like I'm kind of lazy around the house, you know, like I'll mow the lawn and stuff, but I'm not like on top of it every week. You know, I'm like, I have to be choosy with what I'm hardworking for, you know, and it has to mean something to me on the inside. I mean, it has to make me feel like I can do something, something really good. Uh, and do things for other people as well. Like it has to be giving back. It has to be kind of, you know, well-hearted, you know, it can't be anything that is like earthly. I mean, it can, it can, if I put my energy towards that and like the earthly side is like, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Oh my gosh, more stand up, uh, in a bar, uh, making money, telling jokes, having a couple drinks with friends, you know, it's like all very selfish. So I'm just naturally like that. Like I work hard for something and man, I just love Jesus so much right now. And like the word of God that I just want to share it with anyone who will listen to it and even share it with those who don't want to listen, but they can't help but hear it. You know, like those people that kind of see what you're doing and they're like, why, what's going on? Like what's going on with him? Why is, why is everything seem like it's, it's working? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, he's good with Jesus. He believes in Jesus. He, yeah, he's, he's in church, man. He's a man of faith. You ever hear that? Oh, I man, that describes somebody that passes away. He was a man of faith. When people say that, that means he was a good man. That means that guy, like, reached people. He affected people differently. Don't you want to be that person? I know I do. So when you ask me if I'm going to do comedy any- again, and I don't know. I really don't. Cause that's, a, that's a big temptation to fall into my old ways, my old thinking, my old patterns, my old heart. Like, while I believe I can overcome those temptations, I really do believe I can. It's not only just a temptation, but it's like, it's going to suck up my time when I could be using that time driving to a show at the show for 90 minutes, uh, for five minutes of stage time, 10 minutes of stage time, and then hang around at the, after the show, say bye to people that are leaving that don't really care about you. They're just looking for the bathroom or even two hours. Uh, so like you're at the club for two hours and then you drive back and want that another hour. So it's a minimum of four precious hours away from my studies, away from my knowledge of God and what it says in the Bible and what Man, it's just, yeah, I want to know everything, dude. I do. I want, I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd like that. And But it's not just my studies, man, which is very important to me. Like, I love to just read and get in, in it and write and just be deep in my thoughts, you know? But even more important than my studies are, like, my time with God, dude. Like, my time with God means more to me now than it ever has before. My time with him is thinking about him, it's writing about him, it's reading about him, it's talking about him openly in conversations, and it's just loving him, man. When I'm reading and I'm in my time with God, I'm actively messaging other people, man. I'm always like, I'll just stop what I'm doing and I'm like, oh, I haven't told this person like I care about them in a while. Like, let me show some love somehow. You know, or I'll just, something will pop in my head that wouldn't have been my own thoughts unless I was actually in that time with God. Does that make sense? And I'm thinking about them. You know, I'm thinking about these people that are in my life, which means, man, he knows I care about these people because I'm thinking about them when I'm with him. And it's his people. They're good people, you know? I and mean, maybe he'll put some blessings on these people in my life, which is dope. Because, like, don't you want good for your family and friends? I know I do. So now tell me, if I decided to do comedy again, and I'm out two nights a week after that, sometimes three, sometimes one, and um, that's two, three nights away from God, away from my studies, my family, my chance to get better at my ultimate calling, which is to tell people about Jesus in a bigger way than you've ever done it before. And that's kind of the vibe I'm trying to live in right now. And what we're all supposed to kind of aspire to do. If you read, if you read what it says, that's what it tells us to do. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, it's weird. It's, it's dope, though. It's like the ultimate pursuit for me, man. It really is, man. The ultimate pursuit. And I hesitated telling people this on a public level, but, dude, this podcast isn't just public. It's intimate, man. Because, like, you know, you can have me on social media, but the ones that click it and actually, like, tune in to listen, that's, the in- that's like, who I want to connect with, you know? It's the most intimate thing I've ever done. And I'm sharing with you guys, like, 100% of me here. You know what I mean? It's, like, with God at the center, like, while I'm writing, like, what I'm kind of going to talk about on the podcast and the way I'm formulating my ideas, it's, like, through God, you know? It's, like, in my quiet time with him. And this is a podcast about Jesus and like his word. Yeah, but this ain't the history channel, ladies and gentlemen. This is the I Like Birds podcast. All right. You're going to get like the real raw version of 
like what a journey is of faith. And I want to just inspire you and help you get to that level with yourself. And I'm such a baby in this dude, but I'm telling you, I don't want to be a baby in it, dude. I want, I want, I want to be here like episode 200. You know what I mean? Where it's like people reach out to me and ask like for advice on something because they know I've read more or they, or they, they, they know I have a question about something that they can ask. And they, they wants to ask a question about marriage because my marriage is doing well. You know, like I want things like that. Ask me about fatherhood. Ask me about those things, man, the things that matter. I want to be a voice for people in my life and even for people that aren't in my life yet but are in my, are going to be in my life to come because of this path. So if you're wondering what the future of this podcast is, we're not stopping at seven. All right. It's good. The future is bright for the show as an audience and as a dude who's behind it. Because, yes, I am a man, but it's God speaking through me because this is all in good faith, man. This is all vibes, as I say. It's all about just being real and being better people, better from within, dude. I'm not in the business of being complacent with my faith. You shouldn't either. And I also have to stop worrying about being offensive on this podcast, man. Because, dude, what people call offensive today used to make people say, damn, that's real. So if you get offended by anything on this show then this show ain't for you. But maybe it is for you, man. It is for you if you want to get better, if you want to learn more, if you want to feel more, if you want to like know Jesus more, if you want to know like what you actually believe in this life instead of walking around with this everybody else group think mentality of American society, then guess what? You're going to be a fan of the show. You'll share the show with your, your people in your circles. You're not even going to share the show. I don't, like I said in the previous one, don't share it on social media. That's not, that's not re- that. I don't think that's real. You know, what's real is like you sharing with people that are in your corner, dog, that are in your phone and your favorites and the people that you're, the people that you DM stuff to on, on Instagram when you see something you like, those people, you know, a funny meme, whatever it is, whoever you're DMing, those people are the people that are in your circle, you know, your family, your, your good friends, your good coworkers, you know, that's who you're going to share it to share it with. It's not going to be on a public level, you know, that's not, that reminds me of in in, in, in in scripture, I don't remember what exactly the scripture is, but it talks about how basically the, the religious leaders like the Pharisees and uh, the people that were in charge of religious law walked around acting like they were like these holy people when in reality they were terrible people. They were they were sinners. They were there were people that, that talked bad about God, didn't even believe Jesus was the Son of God, and they walked around acting like they knew something about faith. Oh my gosh. So yeah, man, share the show. Cause then, man, you'll also like, oh, dude, can you imagine like just you'll be like you being hyped for the next episode? Oh, imagine that feeling, dude, of like just being ex- like you know that feeling of uh, I don't know if you guys are all. I mean, I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan, and the the documentary came out every week, right? And every week I was so excited for it. Oh my gosh, and when it ended last night, it's like, what am I gonna do with my Sundays? <sighs> But, you know, it's like having that something to look forward to, man. It can become a part of your weekly routine, man. And that's uh, that's the goal of the, the show. Man, that's the vision of it. It's not the goal. The, the goal is so much bigger than one one sentence I can tell you right now. You know what I mean? So, But one of the visions is that, you know? Because then you'll, you'll be forever riding it out with me, and you'll be forever riding it out with God, dog. Because you'll have God in your life every week. And you'll get to see what this can turn into, dude. You'll get to witness what the show turns into. Lives being touched. People living like Jesus. Lives being saved earthly lives and eternal lives oh my gosh like how powerful is that my guys oh oh my god god is good jesus is dope seriously man ever since um i made the decision to read the bible more my life has been in different hands all right it's been in different hands i promise you guys the beats of my drum is different my entire insides feel different and when i say different i mean better better man i was a wreck before as a man i promise you i had so much things on my chest in my heart that were not good man it was not good it's like yeah i've always been a decent person to everybody but like when i put my head on the pillow at night sometimes it was hard to go to sleep you know what i mean it's like not just because i think about stuff and i'm very like deep thinker and yeah you know i'm just i, I go off on thinking tangents and stuff like that but at the at the self-reflection aspect of the way I felt about myself it wasn't good man it was a wreck I really was dude and I couldn't tell you why couldn't tell you why 
Yeah, I could. Because I didn't know God, dude. I didn't know what Jesus did for me. Do you? Do you think you know? You don't know. I don't even remotely know. I barely know. I'm trying to figure every day. I'm trying to figure out every day why a man would do anything like this for us, for other people, for us, other people. Not he didn't do this for. For his mom, he did it for us. You know, the future generations of life, the 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 sinners next to him, like the people that treated him like trash. That's who he did it for. He did it for them. He did it for the people that betrayed him, his disciples, Judas, Peter. And it all comes back to the most beautiful thing in the world, love. He loved us so much, man. And all he wants from us is to have a relationship with him. Check up on God, man. See how he's doing, not just how you're doing. Thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Majority of the people that listen to the show live in America. Thank God. Thank God. I am so blessed with the opportunity to even reach people with a platform like this. Christians are getting killed in other countries right now, dude. If you if 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 you believe in Christianity as a Muslim, that 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 religion messes you up, bro, like the people in it. You're blessed, man. You have a freedom of choice. You have a free will to believe what you want to believe and Jesus is the right way. It's the truthful way. And dude, all God wants us to do, man, is just read a book he gave us. Read a book he gave us. Think about him and talk to him. It's so simple. Why do we fight it? Why do we let society tell us that it's okay to not want to pursue God and believe in Jesus. Why do we let them do that? Why? Can't talk about it at work. Can't talk about it at school. Can't talk about it at my house. Can't talk about it uh, when we go out to a restaurant and somebody sits next to us. Can't talk about it on, on an airplane. Why do we get embarrassed to believe in Jesus? Why? Why, do we, why, why are we embarrassed to believe in a guy who, who changed lives for the better? In that time, when he was here, changing lives for the better, who, for the last 2,000 years, has still been changing lives for the better? Still, in Jesus' name. So why do we get embarrassed to believe in Jesus? Why do we let worldly things distract us from just a little bit of time with him? A few hours a week will be huge, guys. If you're at two to five hours of God time a week, because you go to church and you listen to a couple worship songs and you listen one episode of the podcast every couple weeks, try to try to raise those numbers, dog. Five to ten hours, double it. You do two to five hours right now. Do five to ten hours, and I promise your entire life will get better. Your relationships. Your perspective, your heart, your hobbies, your choices, your bad habits that you think you can't break yourself. Your entire life will change with just a few more hours a week pursuing him. Listening to a 20-minute podcast can change your whole day. I can't wait for the day where I get a message that says, hey, you're dropping like two episodes a week. I'm going to need four. How do I get four? How do I get two more? What do we got to do as the I Like Birds audience member to get more? And I'm going to hit them back. Read two chapters in the Bible. It will take 20 minutes. It can change your whole day, and I promise it will. Guys, I am me, all right? Maybe for the first time ever, God is helping me be me, or at least a better version of me, which is better than me. Because me is, is always changing. Is me changing for the bad or am I changing for the good? And if someone ever says, you changed, it usually means for the bad. Or you outgrew them and now they're bitter. Which, let's try our best to, if we're that other person on the other end, to be the latter. You know, You're going to have to outgrow people when you're on your walk with Jesus, man. You're going to lose people. 
but you're going to gain so much more people, so much more goodness, good people, like good vibes, good energies, good opportunities, you know, like it's powerful. Like I'm experiencing powerful moments with God. God is helping me be courageous with my love for him. He's opening doors in my life to go through them. And behind the doors, they seriously all look like I'm like helping people, spreading the word of God and really having a relationship of a lifetime with him. And dude, the only way I know how to do that is to be allowed to do that on a professional level. I don't want this to just be my path that I'm on in a linear way. I don't want to just keep doing the same thing. It was like read podcast, read podcast. No, it's, that's going to keep going, but I want even more. I want more knowledge. I want more traits to learn how to become a minister. You know, I want to learn how to, to give the word of God in a very efficient way, you know, and the way I'm doing it now, I think is really going to be the way to connect with people on a, on a much deeper level. I do want to get as much knowledge on the Bible as possible so I can keep giving that, you know, I can give it more. I can give more of myself to that. I can figure out a way that can reach you specifically because you deal with this, which is, I don't have knowledge on that part of the Bible yet. So I can't help you there because I'm not there yet. So with that being said, I'm enrolling into a two year Christian ministry program and I promise I'm going to do everything in my power to reach people for him, for Jesus for what he's done for us. I want people to know who he is. It changes your whole life. Like my spirit, my mind, and my heart are calling me in that direction. God is equipping me with all the thoughts and feelings about this. He's already working through me to other people in my daily walk. I see it. I feel it. I feel people. I feel people's energy when they're caring about what I'm doing and what I'm helping them do with their own spiritual side of life. And he wants me to take it even further that one is already right here, which is already so great. The podcast is so great. The in-person relationship is already so great with, with God at the center. This podcast is, is everything to me, and growing it would mean the world. Seriously, simply because I want everyone to hear and know the Word of God. It's insanely beautiful, and it speaks life, it speaks love, it speaks wisdom, and it's the only way I want to live. And I want to share with others the way to live. You know, don't be like me. Be like you through him. I got, I got, I'm walking with Jesus already. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, my footsteps are moving. You know, I already walked too far to come back, you know, and I'm here for it. You know, I, I, I know it's going to be a long journey. I know it's going to be sucky sometimes. I know that things aren't going to go my way. I know people are going to talk smack. I know that the devil is going to try to come in some point. I know that there's, there's this light that has to shine on you so bright because you have to walk in this huge light. Because you represent something bigger than yourself. And that's fine. I'll wear the uniform. I'll wear the uniform for him. Because we're supposed to. We're supposed to. The The word tells you to. The word tells you how important it is. He gives you treasures in heaven if you do these things. You know, it's not. He gives you treasures on real earthly life, dude. You get things from him that you could never imagine. God blessed me before I even knew I was blessed. I had my wife before I realized I was blessed as I was. I had my son Noah at 19. I had Malachi. They're beautiful people. They're great people inside and out. I'm blessed. My son is so dope in school. He's so dope in athletics. He's so respectful. He's likable. He's funny. He has the biggest heart. He's sensitive. He's sweet. He's everything I'm not or I wasn't that I'm trying to be. I was blessed before I even knew I was blessed. So why would I not want this for other people? Why would I want not, would not want to share what I know with other people? I have to. I have to. So there's the big news of my life. Uh, I didn't know if I was going to share it when. I knew eventually I would. I didn't know how the medium was going to be. I didn't know if it was going to be a blog post. I didn't know if it was going to be a video. I didn't know if I was just going to keep it in the dark. My wife suggested I just do it myself and... And don't tell people because other people get in my head. But nobody's getting in my head. It's been all love, baby. It's been all love. And if there's not love, you're off the team. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> if you don't show love, you're off the team. If you're going to be a hater, you're off the team. Do you understand? The team is tight, baby. You don't, like, you're going to want to be on the team. 
<laughs> the team is dope. All right, you're gonna want to be on the squad, as me and my boy Jeff the Weird say. The squad is heavy. All right, people are trying to hang with us because the squad is like being in our company is dope. And as as much as that sounds cocky, who cares? It's it's the mindset. It's the what you're living for. It's the way you treat life, man. Treat it like you own it. You know, and like don't let anybody tell you you have to go do something. You don't gotta do nothing. All right, you don't gotta do nothing. Oh my gosh, don't let people tell you to stay inside. You don't got to stay inside. You don't have to. Don't tell people you got to wear a mask. I'm not wearing a mask. I got an immune system. I got a God who's protecting me. I got a God who's not putting this on my heart and my soul for no reason. You think I'm going to go out there and get the virus and die with all this love that I have to give to people? God wants me to do this, man. And he wants you too, man. He wants you on the team. Come to the team. The team is fun. We're the Bulls, baby. We're the Bulls. Six and eight years. And black Jesus went away for a year and a half to play baseball. You understand? It's the Bulls. Jesus is the Bulls. Uh, That was just kind of uh, getting silly there. But nah, man. Uh, Thank you for the support, man. (laughs) I really appreciate it. Thank you for putting up with me. Uh, I love you guys. Uh, God is good. Jesus is dope. I'll see y'all next time. All right? I appreciate y'all. God bless.